Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we ask the question, well, we are actually gonna be asked lots of questions. It's an AMA episode, y'all. Ask me and Rhett anything. Anything, anything at all. Of course, you, you know, the, the illusion of an AMA is that, well, you can ask anything, but that doesn't mean we're gonna answer anything. It's not answer me everything. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an aim. Hmm. That's not how you spell aim, but okay. Ame. It's ame. Uh, yeah. so, we're, so we got lots of questions here. But we do wanna let you know. And we're gonna get into them. Uh, this is the last, actually the second to last Ear Biscuit of 2018, and something wow. very exciting is happening in, happening in 2019. For those of you who enjoy Ear Biscuits visually, you've enjoyed it in a number of places. <laughs> On the This Is Mythical channel, now the GMM channel, and in, in an effort to continue to confuse you and mix things up, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be putting all the Ear Biscuits the past year biscuits and the present year biscuits and the future year biscuits on its own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ear biscuits. Finally. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Ask whoa, me anything. Do not get, Ask why, me why you gotta get that loud about it? Ask me anything. It's not about youtube.com slash ear biscuits. Why do you need to get that loud about it? Because that's what you have to do. I've, I've been on the internet for a long time and anytime oh, yeah. a YouTuber has an announcement, they've gotta get really enthusiastic about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get excited about it. You have to make it so seem go like over there you're excited so they get excited. Go over there and describe it. I mean, subscribe it. Subscribe to it. You can describe it. Uh, YouTube.com YouTube slash Ear Biscuits, past, present, future, starting in the new year. Starting in the new year, that w that's where you, all your new biscuits will be housed. But we're not in the new year yet, we're in the now year. You can subscribe now though, you said that. Ask me anything. How do you subscribe? Uh, you go to youtube.com slash ear biscuits and you click on the subscribe button. You could probably also program your computer to automatically, you could write a script. Okay, I'm over it. And, now what and do we wanna talk about? You can actually go into a public library and write a script on all the computers and get them all to subscribe to it too. Not that I encourage that. So before we get to the first question. But I'll give you a cookie. Uh, I guess I have a question for us because we didn't get to settle the conversation we were having right before we came in here, because it's like, all right. Hold on, are you, like, what, are you cold? No, I have on a coat. Were you cold? Um, I anticipated the potential of being cold. It's that time of year, man, you gotta bundle up. I like this jacket. It's got fur around it. But it's interesting that we're both comfortable right now. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm in a short sleeve shirt. You're in. Isn't a, that a beautiful thing? You're, you're in like an Icelandic it, it, jacket, and we're it, both comfortable. Isn't it beautiful that we can both be comfortable and not have to worry about what the other person's wearing? But I'm concerned about one of us, and I don't know who I'm supposed to be concerned about. It. I think one of us may be getting sick. I'm probably just getting hot. Okay. All right. Um, before we get into other people's questions, my question is, can we settle the conversation that we were having right before this? I don't know if we need to settle it, I just. Which I, was. I was just pointing. We, okay. were coming, we, were, we were coming in here and then it was like, well, I, hold on, I gotta, I gotta go pee before we start. And then you're like, oh, me too. And we go out there and there's two bathrooms and the doors are shut on both of them. And I'm in front of you mm -hmm. and from my perspective, I did what I always do because I'm a, I know how to do things. Oh gosh. I knocked on the door. And immediately grabbed the handle. And then I grabbed the handle. There was no hesitation, there was no listening. And when I, I here's the thing, when I saw you. you know there was no listening? Because I what, watched. my ears were closed? I witnessed you doing it, and I know your reaction time is not on the fast side, and so the fact, the fact that you knocked and immediately lowered the hand to the handle made me realize that you are the person in this office who does the one-two combo and makes everyone else nervous. <laughs> I, maybe there's other people that do it. All I know is this. Oh, you experienced? Is that inside of there? I do not like the unsettling feeling of someone grabbing the handle of a bathroom door while I'm doing my business. I mean, I will just pucker right up and everything stops for a moment because it because it's nerve wracking. You feel like somebody's coming in the door. Well, I I so, guess I don't well, so disagree let, with that so, part of it. So my technique well, is to knock on the door and listen and give people an adequate time to respond, which I would say is 
two seconds, not point two seconds. Uh, and then I would say 95 to 98% of the occupants in this office will respond with some sort of audible indication that they're in there. I, well, so I, listen. In I'm all not, my years of working here, I've never had to grab the handle, not once. That's not, that can't be true because you know what? Some, a lot of times the door's shut and there's nobody in there so you knock and then you have to grab the handle and the door opens. Well, no, I'm saying when I didn't hear anything after a certain amount of time, I was just like, nobody's in there. I'm saying I haven't Listen, ever grabbed the handle and had it locked on me. I knocked. I you, didn't hear you anything. Knocked and, and I grabbed immediately the grabbed the handle. Immediately, it, no. it was like it. In fact, oh, you I, know it, what? It could have been the two hands. You could. You, you no. may have knocked with one hand and grabbed with the other hand. It almost sounded simultaneous. You are undermining. See, if you think <laughs> that I possibly could have been two hand in it, how quickly? Then that was just how that's, quickly. That's patently false. It was this quick. It was. It, it, okay, I'm gonna make a the noise of the handle with my mouth. It was. Well, no, it wasn't. I think I think what happened was that quick. I grabbed the handle, but I didn't push. I was ready. I had my hand over it. It was almost a hover, and you misinterpreted that as a. I've been on the receiving end of it many times. Is what I'm saying. I've been in there. I've been midstream, and I hear a knock, and I and immediately I say. My my word is yep because I know the question is is there someone in there so I just go ahead and answer I don't say occupied that sounds like some sort of Victorian thing I just say yep I think we've but I, I am having but, flashbacks to this particular part of the conversation I think you did convince me to change from occupied to yep I'm just remember that but, but here's the thing I always nobody say yep. sa listen nobody said anything and you're saying it's because I I did the handle too quick. But then you're saying so after I did the hand on his lock, you don't say anything? No, no, I'm saying if you had to give it, if you had to give an nobody ad, said anything. Yeah, because you grabbed the handle at that point, they're just trying to get in and they're like, well, I guess the lock's gonna do the, my business now. And then you just shut up because you're nervous because you think maybe somebody's breaking in on you. Well, no, now I think that the door's locked but nobody's in there. I'm just saying. That happens at my house all the time. I don't know how my kids do it, but the, and maybe that's what ruined it for me. I'm just saying they'll they'll lock no one in the bathroom and then nobody yeah, can get I, I've in. I've been there before, but that happened just being out there. On the, I'm just saying being on. I don't know how it is for you. You don't know because no one else does this. We should have asked. We should have waited for the person to come out, and we should have asked them about their experience. And here's another that thing. that would have settled. Here's it. another thing. Instead of us, sometimes you, people don't me having to endure this. Hold on, hold on. prosecution. You, I don't think you have a leg to stand on because. Sometimes the door doesn't completely shut. Sometimes people forget to lock, and at that point, you've got full exposure. I did knock. Yeah, I, no, all no, that's no. in question is you, how long I waited. You and, knocked, and that's a that's to me open to interpretation. I feel like it's one of those situations where it's like a word that used to be two words but became one word over time. Like you, your knock, your knock and twist is such is one action at this My, point. It's Listen, a knock and twist. My response to a knock is it's, very quick. It's a knock and twist. It's all one word. I'm I'm immediately ready if somebody knocks to say, yep. But when you are peeing or pooping, you're focused on that. And when somebody knocks, I gotta say, you got a lot of your brain is, is, is currently committed to just hitting the toilet properly. Fine, I'll knock twice. You need a second and a half to say, yep. You gotta. I'm, I'm gonna knock five times from now on. It's not the better? number of times you One, knock. Two, three, it's four, the number five. of time. No, because then you're not gonna be able to hear when they say anything. It's the amount of time you wait. You gotta give it three seconds. Just give it three seconds. Because listen, I'll tell you what happened to me. At this bathroom, well, 1, 000, the same 2, exact 1, 000, bathroom 3, 1, that you knocked on. I went up to the bathroom and I knocked on and I knocked on it, and then I realized, oh, in fact. If I see that the door is slightly open, I still knock. I'm that respectful of somebody's private space. So I knocked and I was like, oh, the door's open. I pushed it open. Someone, you knocked the door open? Someone who doesn't work here but works for us in a capacity was midstream. Oh, wow. Midstream. Now I see why that you have so much pain associated with this because you've, you've. It's just called respect, man. You've been hurt. You, you've been. R-A-S-P. E C T. So you 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 walked in on somebody. So you're very sensitive to it. That was I, that's that never was, happened. To that me. was last year. I, I've always been sensitive to it because 
when people, some people don't knock at all. And I think. Oh, in that's my, horrible. In, in my mind, your knock and twist is the same as no knock at all. It's so jarring. It might be worse because it sounds like two people trying to get in at the same time. <laughs> it's I, like, this is a full on attack. I am, I'm, I'm hurt to be lumped into that category. Well, you should feel bad. It's not the same category. A knock and twist is not the same as just a phantom twist. Uh, as a victim of the knock and twist, I gotta say, it's as bad as the twist. <laughs> Maybe I just need one good walk in and it'll it'll cure me. I think I just gotta, I gotta walk in on somebody. And what are you saying now when pe people knock? I think I heard you say it the other day. You're saying yep now too? Yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna change my mind about this then. You can't keep winning these. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I'm a walk in. Occupy does the job. Uh-huh, does the job. Occupy, that's three whole syllables. You got it, buddy. You, you, pr anything you say at all, really, it could be effective. And but do, you, do you say something back? Because, hey, I, I knocked earlier at the other bathroom, the, the hidden poop bathroom, and I'm pretty sure that was Alex's voice. <laughs> he had time to respond. You, I'm and telling you, know you what? I'm telling you, you, you did this, you did, but I'm I didn't, sure you did the knock I just twist. walked away, I didn't say, should I have said anything, no, Mr. No, no. Set, setting of standards? You do not speak back to a person. It's like, yep, it's like, okay, I'll be waiting right out no, here no. listening. <laughs> yeah, you don't, no, this, this seems self-evident to me. You do not speak back to the I person. I didn't, I just wanna make sure. You, and, don't, and don't apologize. I walked away. Now, if you do the knock and twist, apologize, but if you just do the knock and they say, yep, that's it. Just, I walked, I walked Your away. Your only part is the, it's the, called the, the knock and walk. Yeah. Knock and walk, totally acceptable. I, I would say slink. I slinked away, defeated, because I was really excited to drop a deuce in that bathroom. You gotta and get was, at least 30 feet away. And then I'm like, now am I going back to the other one? It's right beside Feldman's desk. <laughs> well, there's, there's a wall. There's a wall, we installed a wall. There's like a little partition wall. Does that do the job? Mm -hmm. it yeah, does. it makes you feel like you're not next to the bathroom, okay. right? That was the okay. that was the design intention. Never thought about it, actually. You never no, thought no, about that, it? Seriously, that's why we put it there. The wall made you not even think about the fact that you're right next to the bathroom. But now you're gonna you think feel about like it. It's a totally different part of the office, but it, you, you're like you're like seven feet from somebody pooping. Yeah, the, the more annoying thing is people walking behind me and bumping into me. Uh, oh, well, yeah. well, this is not a complaint session. I don't want you, I don't want <laughs> well, you to start yeah. saying, well, if I am gonna complain, it's gonna be about these six things. <laughs> That's not what we're, we're not expanding the conversation. Unless you're gonna defend me and my knock and twist, which uh, yeah, well. seems pretty indefensible at this point. No, I'll, I'll, I'll grant you that. I will think, of, I'm gonna think about it. I don't, like, I don't like counting seconds in my head, though because they're always faster than they are in practice. I have to count them out loud. I would so just I'm say, I'm going to do it out loud. Just remove knock, the- Knock, knock, one, one thousand. Just remove 1, the twist. Just remove the, the twist from your from your world. The twist will come naturally when you're like, oh, nobody's in there, and then you'll just enter, and twist is just intrinsic to entering. I think door. I just had to pee really badly. Well- Can't blame a man for that. Not sure we settled anything. Um, Many times, I mean, we could also okay. institute just the open door policy where it's like as many people just wanna go at once can. I mean, it's, a, we're all human. That's the worst idea. It is. I, again, it's kinda like counting out loud. Now that I've done it, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, now I know what time it is, Yeah. Um, so to speak. So we're not, We just to clarify, uh, for legal reasons, uh, we do not have an open door bathroom policy at Mythical Entertainment and uh, that one guy who you walked in on the apparently co does. The co-founder of the company uh, was just talking about that for entertainment purposes only. Um, well, isn't, isn't that in the description of all of our podcasts? <laughs> yeah, right, like the, for entertainment the, purposes only. The views only. expressed herein are not actual views, they're just presented as entertainment fodder. Well, let's present some some answers to some questions, uh, but before we do, we do that, uh, Link, you have on a jacket that people can't buy, but you have on a shirt that people can buy. Look at this, it's a mythical skate-esque shirt. It's a black skate esque it's a black shirt and it says mythical on it. It's like that's I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Go to mythical dot store. When's the last time you skated? Um, on a skateboard. Probably three months ago. Last Christmas How did that happen? Christy bought me one of those trendy little skateboards and I was like, Girl, <laughs> you don't want me to get on this. And where'd you do it? She thought it on was On the street? On our street, yeah. Cause like Bold, um, man. Lincoln 
and Lando would like ride their scooters around. You can also get that shirt at amazon.com slash mythical. Uh, we do have some select uh, merchandise shirts. over there at uh, different stuff at those two stores. So slash mythical. Check them both out. For those of you who are like, I'm only going to do it on Amazon. Well, you know what? We thought about you. You know what? Let's get into some questions. We got sweatshirts too over there. Let's get into some questions here. Um, Tatiana Kolova asks. What questions are you tired of being asked? Hashtag ear. Yeah, let's pitch start kiss. with that one. <laughs> <laughs> what question? Yeah, let's uh, let's let's say all the questions we're not going to answer. I guess. Um, well, I I think the most common question I get asked is, "Wow, why? How how do you put up with that other guy?" <laughs> or, "What makes you so amazing?" Right. So tired. How are you so, so amazing? It's probably. One. How I should have phrased that. No, it's what's the grossest thing you guys have ever eaten on GMM? That we get that question a lot. Every Q and A, and that's a fair question because it's it's just the first one that comes to your mind when you know. I told you this this morning. I don't know why it, this is not much of a realization, but sometimes you you realize things that are obvious, and it just feels like an epiphany. At least I do that all the time. <laughs> I think you just described your life. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized something that's been obvious to everybody else. Um, I realized that I can't think of another show that unapologetically eats balls like us. It's like that's what's happened to our show. It's like Andrew, what we, Andrew uh, what, I always called him Zimmerman, but that's not it. Canceled, he's gone. Bizarre Foods is gone, Zimmer. but you're right. I mean, Zimmern. but it wasn't, I mean, he he ate a lot of balls. Just eating so much crazy stuff. But nobody on the internet, maybe. I guess we, yeah, we got the corner on that now. Now yeah. the Bizarre Foods is gone. Put the ball in the corner. Corner pocket. Right in the pocket. And two two ball, pocket. two ball into the corner pocket. <laughs> by pocket, we mean crotch. So, I don't know, and then, the, the, it. I think the reason why it's so annoying is because we haven't come up with just that, answer that we say all the time. I have. But then I feel the need to say, well honestly, it all runs together. It's all so bad. Because y you say, well, congealed pork blood is the worst thing that we've eaten. Pork blood! Will it taco! <laughs> but I don't even know it's concise and it's not false. Yeah, it's just a, it's an but answer that's but not there's, false. There's got to be things that we've eaten that are that are just that bad. Oh, the bile was ridiculously horrible. Uh, again, I don't want. I don't even want to answer this question. We are, <laughs> we're answering it. But the reason we're so why, tired of answering it. But we, I think the reason why we're tired of answering it is because we there's it's not a it's not a fun or funny answer and we get it all the time. So it's the one two punch of we get it all the time and it's not a great response. It's kind of like telling the story of how we met. Well, we turned that into a song and then it became something that was like, okay, now we can keep telling this story. On the first day of our grade. Well, the other question that we get asked almost as much and I actually think it's m my even more least favorite question mm -hmm. than what you just said because I don't have an answer for it. I don't know what this is gonna be. What's your favorite episode of Good Mythical Morning? Oh, your favorite episode. Uh, again, that's when I always answer, you know, to be honest with you, they all kind of run together. I mean, like, mm -hmm. people who watch the show remember the show better than we do um, and remember sp specific details of the show better than we do. But I did recently answer that question that, uh, just because it just seemed like a good answer at the time that the Post Malone. I said a hip hop, the itsy, the bitsy spider went down the water spit spout. Because it seemed like a good answer at the but, time. Because again, I don't really know. It's like, I, there's, a, I have, there's a lot of episodes that I like had a blast doing. Um, I always said the next one. But Post Malone, that, that was one that is super, it may be the most memorable one. The one that makes me feel the coolest. Yeah, but we were, we were kind of stressed out. It's like you, you know, you, 
We, you know, so it was a stressful environment with that, the musical exercise we were doing. So it was like. Yeah, I was rapping in front of Post Malone, rapping like Post Malone in front of Post Malone. At the time. A little nerve wracking. I would say, so, so I don't know, it wasn't the, but, but as an episode, but maybe not as an experience at the time. Here we go you answering any, questions that we're tired of. You got any other ones? You wanna, yeah, let's move on. Uh, this is a question. How tall are you before we move on? Uh, I'm just curious. Oh, 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 oh uh, no one's ever asked that. Thanks for asking. Oh, how tall are you? 5'19". See, you came up, you have the cute answer. It's like, yeah. with the question you get all the time, you should have a cute answer you and you should just move answer. on. Right, right. Five, nineteen. And that's why we hate those other two because we don't have a cute answer. Let's come up with cute answers. So, uh, this, believe it or not, <laughs> it's a question that we're asked a lot. Uh, might as well answer it. Uh, this is from Allie Dickinson. This is a, this came from two different people in two different ways. Allie D Dickinson asked, "What is the one thing you would tell young Rhett and Link if given the chance?" And Emma, uh, soft and better on Twitter, asked, "If you were given the opportunity to go back and change one thing in your lives, would you?" Could be a correction of a mistake or skipping. Skipping out on something you knew ended horribly, or would you be too afraid of the dreaded butterfly effect? So, so this this type of question, if you could go back, blah 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 blah, is one we're tired of being asked. Well, I think people ask that because our history, our shared history, is such a part of the work that we do, and we're talking all the time about our past, and so, and then we also say things like, "Who would have known that going to engineering school?" Would have led to this, and I actually, so I think people. It's it's natural to be like, well, what, what would you what would you do? Would you go? Would you say something to your to young Rhett and Link? And what would it be? And would you be afraid to screw things up? I actually have a brand new answer to this. Okay. Like I was, <laughs> I was literally thinking about this yesterday. Okay, so I have an answer. Do you have Do you have an answer? Uh, well, I actually kind of have a brand new. I have a, the same old answer in a brand new way. Do you want to go first? Because I was talk, I was talking with my, uh, uh, you know what? You answer your answer it first. Well, I was at the gym and I was thinking that my shoulder has started hurting again. Hold on, you're joking. That you started thinking no, about my, this at the gym? No, I I was at the gym and my shoulder started hurting, and it, this is related to my shoulder. Okay, well, this is kind of freaky. You'll see why in a second. Is this the butterfly effect? <laughs> Yeah, Why are your eyes getting so wide? Is a butterfly about to come out of them? Because it's weird that independently you went to a very similar place that I'm about to go, but just go ahead. The gym? Yes. Really? Literally, the gym is where, and, and it was literally yesterday. What? Yesterday morning. We, yesterday morning, We yes. may have been what exploring this question at the same time. What? If did, I you, could, did you see a butterfly come through? If I could if go, I, if I could go back in time, I, I wouldn't have thought about it. <laughs> it's too weird. <laughs> this is way too weird. And not no. only did mine happen at the gym, but it was in relationship to an injury. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think this just says that we're like old and decrepit. But I'll, no, no. But it's weird and like yeah. In you know like our lives are continue to mirror man. each other, man. I was yeah. looking in the mirror too. <laughs> <laughs> I was um. Well, I was doing some pull-ups and then, um, <laughs> stop, stop freaking out. Uh, I mean, by the time this comes out, this video's long gone off the wave of the internet, but this it was that um, the guy in Switzerland who was hang gliding with. Oh gosh. Uh, in tandem with a, with a hang gliding guide and the guy didn't strap, in, dra strap him in, so it's like pelvis was like hanging up and being supported by the weight of a strap. <laughs> And it's the entire ride from the top of a mountain in Switzerland, the dude is hanging on sometimes by his, only his left hand <laughs> for dear life as the guy tries to steer down the side of the mountain. And he, and the guy who trains me is like showing me this footage and then he's I like, saw it. it's crazy. He doesn't die, which makes it fun to talk about. He seems to have a good sense of humor about it. But he tore his bicep. And he was he tore his bicep and he and he hurt his shoulder and then, which um, is first of all, crazy, and we that said he was able to hold on that long, yeah, and to and to hurt himself that badly, because and to not um, let go. My trainer guy, he was like, "There's this, there's this challenge where I can't remember where he said it was the hang glider challenge." No, if all you, YouTubers are doing can, it. Now. He was like, 
if you hold on to, it's the it's Venice Beach. You can go there, and if you can hold on for a hundred seconds, it'll give you a hundred dollars. Just hang. Just hang for a hundred seconds. Must be a lot harder than it seems. And then he's like, "How? Let's see how long you can hang." Now I had already done some pull-ups. Okay, you know, full uncheated pull-ups, like lock elbow back up. But I thought that hanging was supposed to make shoulders feel good. I'm just saying that. I was a little tired and then I started hanging, okay? And he starts timing me. How long do you think I went? Well, if 100 seconds gives you $100, it means that in order to make that a profitable proposition, no more than 5% of people could do it. <laughs> uh, I would put you in the uh, 40th percentile. Thanks, um, a- after my pull-ups, right? I'll put you in the 30th percentile after pull-ups. So I think he went for 27 seconds. Uh, thanks for that vote of confidence. I went 45 seconds. Oh, okay, not bad. But that was really hard. But you know, my life wasn't in danger. I wasn't literally hovering over the Alps or wherever they were. Um, it was really hard. Hmm. That's all I could do. I bet you I couldn't do that. I but, bet you I couldn't do 45. So then afterward I was like, my shoulder was already, that didn't make my shoulder hurt, my shoulder was already hurting from doing some kettlebell swings a week earlier. And I was I was kind of, and then, so like doing something like having fun, doing this hanging challenge is something that like I started getting nervous about and then I started thinking. You were having fun? I was having fun at the gym. Wow. And then, but the, I was like, I'm nervous that my shoulder's gonna be hurt worse and then I'm like, you know what? If I could go back in time, I would go back I guess it would be four years ago now, and I would not sleep on my right arm. If you take, I would sleep on my right side and I would put my hand behind my neck so as to be resting my right ear and thereby my entire head on my right arm. And I would just lay there like that and sleep, and which would allow me to spoon Christy. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying, you know, you want to you want to get snuggly. I can't sleep in that configuration. Well, I did it for at le- at least for years. I did it for years. I will say though that your your shoulder issue was a college thing as well. I remember do, like on the bench press, it would sometimes you'd be like, "Up, oh, it popped out." Yeah, it was kind of weak. So it started pretty early. Well, my physical therapist, because I went to physical therapy. This is what actually, ironically, got me to start going to the gym consistently was on the on the backside of going to, I went to the doctor for my shoulder, he sent me to physical therapy which made the pain go away, but what they dis, what they explained in physical therapy was you need to keep doing these exercises forever. forever. And so then I started going to the gym. Until you die. But they also, he also explained that like, the way that I would put my arm up like that, it's basically like, if you were to raise your hand right now and then picture the, um, the two bones coming together in your shoulder and rubbing against each other and then being in cool. traction. And after that grinding, mm. it just it, it wore down the, the cartilage and cushiony stuff and now that stuff doesn't grow back. So now if I don't get, if I don't. Stem just, cells, man, they can make I it know. grow back. You can go to Panama and get injected. I was like, I, man, it's, it's, I'm so, gonna do that it's so frustrating that if I just slept on my back, and not cultivated this habit of sleeping on my right side, I wouldn't have this this pain now. Now, let me interject at this and point. And so that is the thing that I would do. Let me interject at this point. I'm done, you're not interjecting. Uh, well, before you, you say that you would, but I wanna talk about whether you actually would or not, because I was at the gym, and I was what? doing the deadlift, which, for, first of all, for me, I'm only at the gym, I'm at the gym because I wanna be in shape and not just turn into just a ball of jelly. But I am also primarily the things that I do at the gym are intended to strengthen my back. And let me just say right now, my back is in better shape than it has been probably in like since college. Maybe since high school, like it is in really good shape. It could all fall apart at any moment if I twist the wrong way but it's a lot stronger and so my trainer has been like working on introducing more exercises and of course the deadlift is something that you could get really wrong really easily and it could cause yeah. a lot of damage. 
Yeah. And as I was doing it, and I don't put hardly any weight on there, it's just like, it's the rack and then like a wheel on each side. So like a like hundred pounds or something. It's like, it's just basically to just get the motion right. I'm not doing a lot. Okay. But I was like. How you, embarrassing. I was like, you know, in high school, I was telling my trainer, I would put three wheels on each side. I don't know how much that is. And at Harnett Central High School at the time, weightlifting class wasn't like, well, how are you supposed to do this? It was just like, they'd put three wheels on each side of the deadlift bar and then guys would just line up one by one and see if they could lift it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. <laughs> it was it, more of a contest. It like was a, like, can you do it? Can you do it? And I would look at myself in the mirror even though I was wearing a weight belt, I don't wear a weight belt now because you, if you're doing it right, you shouldn't need one. And I yeah. would be bending over and putting all the weight on my lower back and just like Ooh. bending like that. And you know what? That's, not That's okay. what created my back problems. I, there's a couple other weird injuries, but I feel like that was the start of the real bad like herniations and sort of changed the way that I, in fact, I was telling her, I was like, it kind of changed the way I played basketball my senior season because I like my back was messed up and and then I was like, you know, if I could go back, I would no pun intended. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that and I wish I could go back and tell my younger self like, you realize that that's stupid. If you could like Look if you at yourself. If you did this right and you did it with less weight and you got the form right, like you could actually like make yourself a better athlete like you could jump higher, not from doing calf raises. Like we were stupid. We thought that the way to jump higher was to do calf raises. <laughs> like the yeah. ca your calves are con contribute to your vertical leap a very very small amount. It's your glutes, man. It's your legs. It's it's your upper it's your upper legs. And so I was like, man, I you know I, I got recruited by some colleges. I was like, if I could go back and like t I would probably would have been recruited by some bigger schools. And then I was like, but you know what? I wouldn't go back and do that because if I had gone and played college basketball, I probably wouldn't be here right now. See, but that's different with me. She was like, yeah, you'd be somewhere in Wisconsin. You know what, That and that'd be sad. So I wouldn't I'm, go I'm, back, man. I'm glad you mucked up your back, man. And, but, and but I for am me, too. But for me, I'm only talking like going back it doesn't and matter. I'm sleeping on my back. How could that butterfly affect anything? It would affect Everything. You think Chrissy and I would be divorced now because I didn't spoon her for that year? You would be divorced, remarried, you'd have a little kid named Link Jr. Every well, that'd <laughs> be weird because I'm the third. <laughs> I know, that's how weird it would be. <laughs> you'd have a Link Jr. And I'd have my dad? Yeah, and it, it's, your whole life would be different if you slept on your back five years ago, man. No, it, I, Everything would be different. I don't believe in the butterfly effect when it applies to sleeping position and I just want to stop and tell all of you now. You do not sleep. Don't sleep with a contorted arm. <laughs> Use common sense. And sleeping sleep, on sleep, your back is great for your, sleep, sleep for your back on your, as well. Sleep on your back no matter what. It's great for everything except spooning. I think it, it does something to your face. <laughs> I think it does, it like stretches your face or something. <laughs> stretches your face. I don't know, maybe it does. Okay. We we certainly spent a lot of time on that question that we yeah, didn't, didn't want to answer. Like we want to answer. Jack Birch asks. Thank you, Emma and Allie. If you could place yourself in any fictional universe or movie, which would you pick and why? Oh, I'm okay. Just knee jerk response to this for me is Middle Earth, man. I mean, but and I thought specifically like where the Wood Elves lived. They're the ones that I haven't watched in a long time, but they're the ones who I believe came out of. It was um. They were more mysterious in the woods. They were the ones that didn't make the trek to the new land and they just kind of hunkered down where they ended up. And um, I think they played more into the Hobbit stories, which chronologically came earlier, but then it's not the Middle Earth that is so special to me from them. Well, they've, they've got Toriel in them, which she's not even in the books. I do like Evangeline, whatever, and Lily, though. I do like her. Really? Yeah, I watched the first half of Ant-Man 2 on the plane. What happened to the second half? Oh, well, the plane landed. <laughs> you gotta time it better than that. I never Just went like back. Just like you time your knock and twist, you gotta time <laughs> your plane movies. You gotta look at the flight time, do the math. Um, it's kind of, 
I, I kind of think in my brain it's like the Ewok village. So I guess what I'm really saying is I'd like to live in the Ewok village if that were within Middle Earth with elves. Because it's hard to communicate with those Ewoks. But the elves are like, you know, they speak calmly and the good warriors. Here's the thing, you would be in, you can't pick a place because I would be like, oh, I'd like to live in Rivendell, but y- y- this is the entire fictional universe. This is the entire movie, the, ty- the entire world there. And I honestly, I'd probably end up in Hobbiton, just eating and gardening. That's a great answer. Thank you, Rhett. Uh, I actually disagree with it though, and this is gonna be controversial, and it actually leads into another question that we were asked, okay? Because I feel like I have to have a lot of qualifiers here. Because I, as opposed to Middle Earth, would pick Narnia, okay? And uh, the reason I would pick Narnia is because I think ultimately it's more fun and more rewarding How, and much less what do you mean more dangerous. Fun? What do you mean more fun? Let's start there, because the evil- Middle Earth is very evil. The and, evil in Narnia is significantly less threatening than the evil in Middle Earth. So you're living in a kid's world, I but think I al- is what you're really saying. But I also think that Narnia, the thing that always intrigued me about those books, and they kind of remain like my favorite, even though clearly uh, Fellowship of the Ring is a better series, but it's for it's not for kids, it's, it's, it's more young adult and adult, whereas Narnia is clearly for young kids. Um, and, but I enjoyed it first as like a single digit age. I don't know what I was, but the first time I read them. And the accessibility, but also the way they related the real world to the imaginative world of Narnia and the ability to like, there is a wardrobe that you can go through. Like there's a pla- there are these uh-huh. places that you can enter into the world. So it created this, I had this imagination. I would always, I would be you had out, an imagination. I would be out in the woods. That's cool. And I would see like a tree with like a hole. You like the portal. And I was like, okay, maybe this is the Narnia. Like maybe this is the time. Maybe this is I'm gonna go up to this and I'm gonna stick my head in the this hole in this tree. Well, that's how you exit Narnia. You should have been looking for a wardrobe. No, no, but there's you can get in there multiple ways. And I figured that in my world, okay, not England, but the U.S. modern day, maybe there were other ways into Narnia, but. I feel like to the generation of, let's just say the millennials, um, I feel like Narnia has been soiled because the movies pretty much sucked. Oh. So I think when they when they think about Narnia, they think about the movies. Okay, okay. And that's why I would go into this other question. Kevin Mata asks, if you were given the opportunity to remake a movie, which would you choose? Okay. So first of all. See, Narnia, I, I didn't read the books. Um, so if you're judging it off of the movies, then you're like, no contest. There's no contest between. I wish I could go back to my childhood and read those books. Okay. I'm just, I just wanted to say that. Well. I, I keep, I, there's a lot of reasons to go back now that I think about it. You're gonna screw everything up <laughs> if you go back and read Narnia. So I'm just saying I don't have that, I don't, I don't, I didn't have an expectation, I also, my kids weren't of an age to take them and they didn't care, so I actually didn't end up watching them in the theater, but they, I did watch one and it did kind of suck. It, okay, but suck you can't, is probably too strong of a word. I know some of you may have really liked the movies, but it, it was, in terms of how impactful the the books were for me personally. But I think, first of all, the if st- you remade the it, would is, you age it up? Because that wouldn't be true to the books. And I think that's really what you're saying. That was your that's your critique of it. Is it that no? The, there there are movies that are more intended for kids that um capture. There, there was a cheesiness to the to the to the movies that it also something that for some reason didn't seem to happen with Lord of the Rings. Like it was a weird moment in CGI technology. Right. Yeah. Not quite as weird as like five years before that, mm-hmm. but just something about the way that you, you have this you have this view of Aslan and what he's going to mean to well, you, you know and, the, and, then, and then you yeah. see him and you're like, I, that's just Liam Neeson. And also, it sounds like Liam Neeson is in my freaking ear because he just did this voiceover into like a microphone like this. I think we're talking budget. I think they have budget issues. I think they spent a lot of money. They spent what? Are the, what was the budget on 
the uh, the Narnia movies, and the, and then what was the budget on the Lord of the Rings? Can you just look those up real quick? But they're doing, and then we're gonna see. We're doing. But Peter Jackson, who, I don't even know who directed the Chronicles of Narnia. Disney is doing these like. Well, live, I should do the next one. Live action remakes, like you know, like The Lion King is. is a lot of people are like total for all, all really three excited films. about that, you know. But Hold on, total I think for all three. Films. I think you're pitching a remake that is like that. Five hundred sixty million. For how many movies? Three. That's a lot of money, man. It grossed one point six billion. It made a lot of money. One point six it, billion. It was gross. successful because of the IP, man. Yeah, but what about Lord of the Rings? Two hundred eighty-one. Two hundred eighty-one total. That's what it says here. Film series. Wow. Okay. Well, they don't shoot in the U.S. They don't shoot in the U.S. There you go. But they made more money. They made more than 1.6 billion. 2.9. 2.9 billion, so to tw almost twice as much. That's irrelevant to your point though. Anyway, because here's the thing that I wouldn't do. But uh, it, I, a lot of people, like just a couple weeks ago on Twitter, people were talking about like, are, are they gonna remake Back to the Future? And a lot of people wisely said, no, don't, you don't remake movies that were perfect. You don't remake perfect movies unless you're a freaking idiot. So that's why I, I think you're onto something. You make the movies, Narnia, remake movies that sucked. That, that well, that didn't, that didn't. They weren't as magical as they needed to be, and and they can benefit from technology now, like the way that Disney's remaking these movies. I mean, uh, people are critiquing the trailer and saying that the Lion King is like a shot for shot. It seems like, and it's like, is that really necessary? And uh, okay, well, hold on. This might be an exception because. Remaking The Lion King in a different way is a slightly different conversation. But what are you gonna do with Back to the Future? You're gonna make another live action Back to oh, the Future. You, no, you make it animated <laughs> with Legos. Lego can do that. It's okay. Lego. If it translates. Lego it, Back to the Future. The only way to acceptably yeah. remake a movie that was done well the first time is to change the medium. That's the rule. Okay, so you can go to animation from live action, which is weird. You can go definitely go to live action from animation, which is cool because it's been done. Jungle Book, was that good? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, it was good. Um, there was a live action character in that though. And there's not one in um, The Lion King. Yeah, I was like, it's oh, not Donald Glover's in it. And then I was like, no, he's not. His voice is in it. It's different, guys. Uh, I haven't seen enough movies to know what to remake. <laughs> so let's ask another question. Okay. Uh, Every movie that I've seen, I only see movies if they like, if they're fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and the audience likes them. And I, you know, <laughs> what? I don't see a lot of movies. <laughs> right, yeah, you don't like Rotten Tomatoes reviews? You don't think they're reliable? No, I just don't think you get those, both of those together. Oh, you don't get both those together. Yeah, yeah I don't watch a lot of movies in the theater. I don't. I ain't got time for that. It got. It's got to be a a knock it out of the park type situation. Uh, Madison Wright asks. I'm gonna remake Aquaman. Like I want to do a low budget. I'll be Aquaman. Hmm. I I can't hold my breath that long. We actually we we heard an interesting sort of industry story about Aquaman that I wanted to tell. Huh? The live action Aquaman is out right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With Jason I know. Momoa. And. But I'm gonna go my, ahead and my remake wife's, it. My wife's favorite person who's not me, Jason Momoa. Now, here, here's uh, something that we heard this, this is inside industry knowledge. We, we, uh, we know someone who knows someone who worked in some costume design on Aquaman. And they spent all this time creating this amazing, yeah, Aquaman handmade suit. Aquaman suit that was like had the I don't remember what I haven't seen it. I'm not going to see it, but scale. it's like scales, and they were like made out of something, and like it was. They spent like months like working on this thing and like handcrafting it, and then they like gave it to Jason Momoa, and he like picked it. It was like it's too heavy, <laughs> and so they ended up like painting, Paint, yeah, painting, painting the stuff on him. Yeah. So take that, which we've done that, Jesse. That's what Jason Momoa will do for you. On our you'll billboard. you'll work on his suit for months and then you just give it to him and he's like too heavy. But he looks but he looks great just having paint on him. So yeah. she knows that. Yeah, right. I shouldn't have brought him up. <laughs> right. I shouldn't even 
say his name because it just puts him in her mind. I'm actually thinking about seeing that movie. And she looks at me. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, that's why I'm going to the gym, man. Me and uh, I'm going to be Jason Momoa in about. Oh, okay. no, you're not. Nine months. <laughs> okay. You you want to think about that a little bit, or do you want me to move on? Uh, yeah. Let's go with Erickson here. Oh, you want to go oh, there? No, we'll go back. Let's go back. We'll get to everybody. Madison. Why don't we read it? Uh, I gave birth to a pineapple. <laughs> On your tour in oh. Portland. <laughs> right. Are you ever going to start sending me fruit child support or do I need to bring in my mom's cousin's daughter who's a lawyer slash opera singer? This is Madison who is it was incredibly memorable and actually was the first person to give birth to the pineapple. Well we didn't, you know, it's just someone on stage who's supposed to model the pineapple. We didn't say that she had, we did not plan. No. It was, a, it was an impromptu interaction that led to her simulating childbirth with a pineapple. But to answer your question. Um, I don't think we have to send fruit child no, support. No, we are not, not in California. We're not gonna send you fruit child support. Mm -mm. Um, yes, you need to bring in your mom's cousin's daughter who's a lawyer slash opera singer. I'd like, I'd like to get litigated via opera. Bring it on, girl. Uh, but Madison. And can you dress as Aquaman? Yeah, there's a suit available. It's very heavy, though. <laughs> Madison was very memorable, and I think we were. I remember after she did that, uh, she sat back down, and I remember saying something like, uh, "We might have an opening at Mythical Entertainment for you," because she was so funny in the moment. So really, that's what she should have asked: is you know, where do I send my resume? But she didn't. She chose to uh, threaten litigation to, and right. look at her now. She's getting uh, belittled in a podcast. <laughs> now we can get to Erickson. Because I, I didn't okay, want to. Okay, go ahead. Ray Lee Erickson asks Do you think cannibalism would solve world hunger and population control? Oh, gosh, that is a morbid thought, Ray Lee. Um, if people ate each other, they would, I mean, they would not be as hungry. Um, true. So that's true. And then the people who they ate, I assume, would die. Well, this is not, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because there's two, there's three forms of cannibalism, okay? And I don't know the technical terms. The first form is like the movie Alive about the soccer team that gets stranded in the Alps. Mm -hmm. That is eating your friends after they've already died. That is a form of cannibalism. In, in order to survive, yes. And in my mind, that is acceptable. Second form of cannibalism is killing and consuming someone. In my mind, that is not acceptable. That's murder. And the third form of cannibalism is voluntary, non-fatal ca cannibalism, where you oh cut gosh. off part of your body and feed it to a group of people, but don't die. Ew. And now this where did, where is the this most. Happen? This is the most interesting form of cannibalism in my mind. <laughs> well, let's camp out here, shall we? Okay. So you're, <laughs> so you're slicing off. You, you, you're like. You're like at a wedding reception, you're like got your leg up on the table like a ham hock. <laughs> yeah. Like a like a prime rib and you're just slicing your Oh god. Well, it would it would have been surgically removed in a sterile environment. You would be okay and then you would present it and you'd be like, "This week, no, okay. So we now, all don't die, we're eating my leg." Now, let's not let's not, you I, whether you eat your own self, no, I, hold on. I don't know. You I, haven't gone, I haven't thought that. You far. wouldn't remove your Whole leg, you would just remove like a calf muscle, like just a part of like the a muscle. jerky. It would be like a jerky. You you you'd remove part of the muscle that would then regenerate like a lizard's tail. Muscle doesn't regenerate in that way, but you can build it up and maybe get close to the the mass. You're right. It, it doesn't regenerate. Though. But you can. That that's why it is a. It's not a renewable resource. So but that's why cut, this is a bad idea. I mean, I got glutes for days. I've been doing lots of deadlifts, so I feel like I could take. You could take a scoop of my glute out. And be like, it's glute scoops tonight. But I do think we should, we should, <laughs> we should glute scoops. That's not gonna work. Are those meatballs? No, they're glute scoops. It's not gonna work. Hold on, why don't you think this is gonna work? Because it's not renewable. But farming lizards and then removing their tails for consumption could help with um, global impoverishment. 
What hunger? What what kind of nutritional value is there in uh, lizard tails? And some <laughs> enough. I, I'm sure. There's, I'm sh- I'm sure you can. I'm sure we can. Uh, we can breed a, f- a meaty tailed lizard, and then you're just scaring it, and it loses its tail, and then it it regenerates, and you just it's like Christmas trees. You have a whole bunch of them, and then they're in stages. So it's like this this group of free range happy lizards. Okay, lot, you need lots of land. They're out there roaming around, but it's like the, you know they're they're bred for their meaty tails, and they're at different stages. This pasture over here of lizards is, you know, they they got some they got some fully developed tails. We're about to yeah, so we're about to scare it's, them. It's like a crop, yeah. And then all you do is you just run through the pasture it's and like they a lose ripe the, peach. You lose their tails. That's a pretty good idea. I don't know if it's a good idea. This is like. Elon Musk situation, man. I should be talking to him, not you. I I think that lizard tails are probably not as good of an idea as just farming insects because right. far, farming insects. But but take, that kills the insects. If you don't want to kill the insect, then you got to go with lizards. They're donating their tails, which is kind of what you're talking about with the glute scoops. I was just trying to go with your mm-hmm. vibe here. Okay. But if you want to go back to cannibalism, I really think we have to talk about eating dead people. I mean, just across the board. Well, first of all, I'm not an expert on this, but uh, it is my understanding that eating dead people is not good for humans. The people who are doing the eating, I think it's unhealthy. What, I mean, it obviously depends on. More so than just eating meat. What they've died from. But you're saying you could survive. Even if it's prepared well. On a mountain for like, you could survive but you're saying it's not good for you? Are you it's not gonna kill you. It, I seem it's not to, nutritionist? I seem to have read at some point that people eating people leads to weird diseases. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I That doesn't ring true to me. I mean, isn't, isn't, isn't like a glute scoop from a, from a freshly dead person who say, you know what, I wanna donate my glutes to be scooped for you know, to, to feed the world. I don't know. It's just something about it just seems like it would go bad after a while. If, if you have all you're eating is glute scoops for days on end. Well, I'm not saying it's all you eat. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that butt muscle is a balanced diet. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a, it's a part of a balanced <laughs> diet. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. te- technically he was at Ray Lee, which I like that name by the way, Ray Lee Erickson. Sounds like, <laughs> Sounds, I like that name, Ray Lee Erickson. It does sound like I'd somebody like to who scoop your glutes when you die. <laughs> it sounds like someone who might, honestly, might commit a murder. <laughs> this week, Ray Lee Erickson arrested for cannibalism in an effort to contribute to population control and solve world hunger. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Uh, it's a beautiful name. Um, I don't. I don't. I think. W- it's a good idea to eat fresh, consensual dead people. Consensual. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think if you- t- You're curious what it tastes like. Well, I know here's that. What, well, I already said that if, if I had to, I would, without qualms, eat a person um, for survival. Life but or I, death. But I wouldn't make it a part of my diet. But there is an interesting proposition that if for some reason, it doesn't turn out to be bad for you. If we could just take all the dead people and create a slurry out of them. Oh gosh. Like Soylent Green. What? Right, I mean that's, Soylent Green is people. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, but seriously, I mean like, you could potentially create a Soylent from human, from dead human tissue and if it was. But I don't like to eat meat slurry. I like to eat, <laughs> I like to eat like, Cuts of meat. It would have additives in it that would make it taste okay. Okay, fine. Let's I mean, do it. It seems to it seems to be better than you know just letting them rot or burning them. And I, I don't think I don't I don't think it's an abomination. I mean, it sounds like it should be, but I don't think it technically is. I don't well, even know what that means. I think I don't know if you can determine what an abomination is That's per, on a personal That's, level. Maybe it's not an abomination. Well, but I think you can because if it's not an abomination, it's definitely an abomination to some people, okay? <laughs> right. 
but I would do it, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want to move on because uh, yeah, Pete Sheridan. I think it's just Sheridan. Oh, okay. Pete Sheridan asks, you know, Pete, you should you've think been about L- you've been in L.A. too long. <laughs> you, all you got to do is add one more I, Pete Sheridan, and you got you got you're onto something. You and Rayleigh Erickson can eat dead people together. <laughs> Pete Sheridan and Rayleigh Erickson, the serial killing duo, <laughs> glute scooping across America. <laughs> Who knew that when you ask a question on the social media that we were gonna make you into cannibalistic <laughs> serial killing duo? Yeah, be careful. Be careful what you ask Trust as Aquaman. Pete Sheridan asks, do you guys know what this rash on my leg is? Well, first of all, Pete, um, you didn't send a picture. Second of all, Pete, don't send a picture. I, I don't. I don't know how to identify rashes on legs, but um, I wonder if that impacts the uh, the viability of the meat of the leg. You definitely do not want meat that has been bathed Rashed. in hydrocortisone cream. You know, or just saying? or not, and just has a rash. Yeah. Well, no, I, you peel the skin off. Does the rash go to the muscle? If the rash goes to the muscle, Pete, you need to see a doctor immediately <laughs> because that's not a rash. <laughs> uh, well, like kind of like an apple gets rotten, it starts on the skin. And it's it, a little different. Yeah, that would be gangrene. That's not a rash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't eat. Don't eat the mushy parts. If the glute scoops mushy, now move on. Speaking of good names. Magnus Mar Payson. Getting a closer look? No, no. Magnus Mar Palson. Okay. Which is definitely some sort of Scandinavian name, I would think, right? Uh, I get. Who are we to generalize? I get a lot of ideas and inspiration from you guys. Wow. Oh, thank you. From watching new GMMs and your biscuits, as well as just watching old Rhett and Link music videos and old GMM videos back when you guys started. I wanted to know what content creators, musicians, and authors, et cetera, ex- inspire you guys. That's a good question, MMP. Um, now, first of all, I'm, this question makes me a little bit, I feel uh, a little inadequate whenever I think about this, and definitely when I'm asked it, be, here, here's, here's why. Okay. Whenever you see like, respected artists interviewed, talk about their work. It seems like the references, their influences and and references to other works are like right on the tip of their tongue. Like, And I've always felt a little funny about that because sure, me and you are heavily, have been heavily influenced by a lot of people and a lot of forms of entertainment, but we haven't processed it uh, very directly, right? Sometimes people are like, what did you guys think was funny growing up? And I'll be like, my dad? <laughs> uh, which is, which is, is has influence. influenced the way that I make the funny. But also like me and you, we watched, we were big fans of Seinfeld. We watched Seinfeld in high school. We watched SNL growing up and we would bond over the latest like Jack Handy, uh, Deep Thoughts. You know, and and uh, yeah, Lorne Michaels is 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 famous for saying that people usually say that their favorite era of SNL is when they were in high school. For us, I think it may have been when we were middle school is when we were like really connecting with it. Yeah, but anyway, sure. There's lots of like sort of the traditional things that we're influenced by, but it it's not this very direct. Uh, it's not like we are just guys, like we're not filmmakers, right? You know, we hope to make movies. Uh, we have made a documentary, but we haven't made a, a, a scripted, a narrative film yet. But when we sit down to do that, it's not like we're a film director who's like, well, these are my favorite visual influences. These are the DPs that I like. These are the directors that I like. This is the, it, this is the style that I that I like, and this is the way that I'm gonna kind of take these pieces and then create my derivative yet original approach to this thing. Hmm. And it's just not that's not how we we don't think that way directly. I think it, we think that way it, it, it sort of inherently. Actually, I have a list. Oh, good. Go for it. Say your list. <laughs> just joking. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, 
I relate to that, but I I did come up with somebody and I do think if we if we narrow, if we if you look at a a particular uh, medium and then we really think about it, we can say who inspired us, okay? So if you think about True. music or if you think about our favorite films or um, our favorite television shows, we can we can trace, or the internet, we can trace the things that inspire us to be creative. Um, it just requires a little work that maybe we haven't done. But uh, an answer did come to my mind, which is um, related to what I'm saying, that the fact that we have aspirations in so many of these different genres, like you know, we wanna, music, live performance, movies, television, internet, we, we, books, like we wanna do all these things. Like even, it's just exciting to, 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 to be creative in all the different mediums, which means that, which made me think that I, I'm really inspired by Donald Glover because of the way that he's done all mm. of those things. Um, and refused know, to really be identif or pigeonholed as any particular. Yeah, like in any particular genre or medium. I mean, that last album is one of my favorites. You know, I I can pick out his musical influences. The most recent or the previous? Um, uh, um, Awaken My Love, which yeah. is I mean, he's only released singles. Yeah, he's just done but singles then, since then. You know, and then the way that. Atlanta is so, um, it's so creative and it's a comedy but it's so many so many more things than that and each episode is an opportunity to reinvent what the show is. You know, there's lots of, it, it's just, I love the way he approaches his live shows and I've, you know, he makes them so special for the people who go there and they're, so, they're events, they're not just a concert. And again, he just has that mentality. He's working on some movie with Rihanna. Yeah, jealous much. That's pretty inspiring. Yeah, and you know what? So just that and, mentality and he was, of, a lot of people, I have an idea to do this type of thing in this medium. Hold on a, second. a lot of people do don't well. know. A lot of people don't know. Uh, well, you probably know if you're listening to this, but he start, he started on YouTube. He was uh, right in Derek Comedy, which I don't. I guess that channel still exists. But it was him and some some of his friends just making sketches. Mm -hmm. You know, some people who were back making sketches on YouTube back in the day are still on YouTube. <laughs> uh, other people are Donald Glover. <laughs> um, but he. But we, uh, we have a tremendous opportunity given the, the way that we've been successful to then say, hey, we do wanna write a book or we do wanna do a stage show and then we can actually do it, you know? Um, so I'm very much inspired by the, by the, the the creative terms with which he goes into something and the way that he brings his fans along with him. I may have talked about that before. So, I mean, that's always inspiring. So I think that's my that's my answer yeah, that's for a, right now. That's a good answer. If I could go back in time, I'd probably come up with even more Well, answers. but the interesting thing is that you're inspired by him in a similar way that now I'm thinking of uh, some someone who inspires me in a similar way. But it, again, it's it's not as direct of an inspiration. So in other words, we wanna do a lot of things and we wanna do them all in an excellent way. Yeah. And Donald Glover is this sort of impossible standard that we can always sort of aspire to and never reach, but hopefully get better as we as we try to. But there's nothing in particular about any of the stuff that he does which is going to be like, we're not gonna make like a funk album, whatever, you know. Um, By the way, did it, I tell you? Unless you want to. Did we tell him that we that I met him? Yeah, we. I think we told the story about meeting him at a local, a local place. I personally thought that walking around a park, you should have gone up to him with your son Lando and said, "My son's name is Lando. Can I get a picture with you?" And it would have been like a cool, a really cool thing. I didn't. I didn't need it to be for anybody else but me. But I didn't need to share it with. But as we've established before, you went up to John C. Riley while he was eating with his friends in a restaurant. That was that was the so difference. you're not you're not above going up to celebrities. Well, I've changed. Um, but again, so but it's not specific works, but somebody whose career inspires me and 
is inspiring me right now because I tend to be like influenced by things as I'm kind of exploring them. The Duplass brothers, Mark and Jay Duplass, uh, they've got a book that I'm listening to. Um, it's like a short audio book. It's like seven hours. And uh, it's called Like Brothers. But they are brothers. And uh, they are brothers. Interesting, isn't it? Now, the thing, of, I, I wouldn't have said that like I, I haven't seen all their movies and I wouldn't say that like I'm a student of the Duplass Brothers films and obviously very familiar with them and kind of know a little bit about their story and like the independent film situation and Puffy Chair and Sundance and all that stuff. So I've always like had this respect and I and I've always and I've always kind of known that I think they're about our age or a little bit older and I think well reading this book it's been kind of weird in one sense because uh these two guys from the south with a with a weird obsession with Lionel Richie really <laughs> um who both the way they divide their work up in terms of like one's kind of the starter and one's kind of the finisher. It, it's And that's just to name a few things. There was hmm. some other sort of like, in their book, like their wives read one chapter. Like it, Really? Yeah, yeah. And then they their book is sort of like a compendium of unsolicited advice, but they actually had the wherewithal to use the term unsolicited advice when they gave it. We just gave it. Um, uh, and then like stories from their past and their and how their relationship works and that kind of thing is the way they communicate. And anyway, I told you that you should be listening to it. You should at some point. You should be listening to it as well. Um, why are you listening to this? You should go listen to that Duplass Brothers book. Uh, but anyway, the thing that was re that's super inspiring about them is just this. You listen to somebody's story about. I think the thing that they sort of represent is sticking to artistic intention mm -hmm. and not compromising, not compromising too much. Because the other thing that they are is they're not like, and they say it multiple times in the book, but they're not these very precious like artists who have this vision that cannot be compromised. They right. they know they're practical. They have they they have a practical. They come from a very like that's like a us, practical yeah. place where you know they know how to work with people and they know how to try to get their vision but also do it in a practical way that like satisfies like a studio that they may be working with or whatever but anyway it just got me i got super inspired to what or, um or or was it to what or just not well just we're always thinking and doing things again i've <laughs> i feel like i say this a lot on your biscuits we're always thinking about and working on things that we can't talk about, uh, but I think that some of the some of the things that they talked about in terms of like establishing it. Let's put it this way: it made me feel really good about some things that we're working on in terms of like things that kind of pull from your personal experience. They they, they use the term mining the epic smallness of your own life, which is. The idea that you have a very particular perspective and mm -hmm. background, mm -hmm. and you kind of get in the middle of it, and you get too close of it, and you can kind of discount. Oh, we shouldn't be telling this person's story. We should be telling our story. Now they tell a bunch of different stories, but they're always telling it kind of through the perspective of what they know and how they see the world. And um, I always get excited about telling stories and what we're going to do with that as our career advances. Um, so anyway, well, that's a good book recommendation. Yeah, right? I, I, there you yeah, go. They're they're. I hope we can we we can uh, we can meet them and like hang out with Lionel Richie, all five of us together. That'll, that'll be a wonderful, wonderful quintuple date. Are they obsessed with the pose? Because that would be a little too close. There's no reference to the pose. Okay, but good. They, but oh, and a, here, they had a band together. So of course, so they they, they, they were a band okay. together and. Uh, they they sang Lionel covers, which I actually don't think we ever sang a Lionel cover. Hmm, that would that's different. Yeah. Uh, we were too cool for that. No, we just weren't good enough. Oh. <laughs> um, well, that brings our AMA to a close. But you know what? I think we have one more answer. You inspire us. Oh, wow. by listening. Yes, yes. Boy, it's nothing. It's that nothing quite sincere. as inspiring as giving us attention. <laughs> So thanks for doing that. I, uh, you know, I for the 
we've heard that we've been an inspiration to to people, and yeah. uh, boy, that's uh, that is really nice. Yeah, I I actually was really nice to find out that you've inspired somebody. I was so. I was looking through uh, as I do f- from time to time, looking for reviews uh, of uh, of our book of mythicality. I ha- I do that from time to time uh, for self validation, and I read I came across a review that was uh, somebody gave us two stars, two stars out of five, mm-hmm. and uh, then said if these guys were half as interesting as they think they are. Um, this would be a good book, <laughs> and um, so yeah. Wow. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we think we're pretty interesting. I don't, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> You're not really supposed to. I just thought it was funny. Oh. Uh, but and you know what you should do? You know what else is interesting? Uh, you should go to youtube.com slash earbiscuits. It's a new YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it now. There's nothing there, but there will be soon, including. Zero subscribers? What? We're not, I thought we were repurposing a channel. It has 2100. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. okay. Well, so we have a it little bit, a we have a little bit of a head start, but 20, go over there. 2,000 subscribers. And, and subscribe to youtube.com slash earbiscuits. <laughs> And uh, all your favorite ear biscuits from the past, present, and the future will be there. If you want to talk about cannibalism, hashtag ear biscuits. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Mm. We'll talk at you next week as this year grinds to a halt, just like my shoulder was grinding against itself for years. Man, if I could just go back. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 